Hey guys, welcome to the Pilgrim fitting video. In this video, I'm going to show you two fits. Now, when I first started out with the Pilgrim, including when I started out with it many, many years ago before it got the buff, I always preferred the armor fit. I tried the dual rep, didn't really like it. It needs some buffer to withstand um, high alpha damage and situations where you need to maybe charge a gate or something. I found that I this is no longer my favorite fit. It's still a very good fit. I highly recommend this fit, but uh, it's it's not as good as the other one, and it has its place. So that's the important thing to remember here is it has its place. So first, let's talk about the Pilgrim in general. Why is the Pilgrim the new king of solo PvP? Well, the atmosphere in EVE Online right now is such that small gang and blob warfare is king. There are camps all over the place. Many of them are insta-lock. And in general, if you use this in the way that I use it, to harass an enemy, to cause your enemy to get very upset at you and to want to take revenge against you, um, for stuff like that, this is a really, really great ship for doing those things. You can get behind enemy lines pretty easily. It's not foolproof going through gate camps, but it is much easier than, say, getting a uh, battlecruiser or even a Tech 2 cruiser, like maybe a Vagabond or something like that. It's much easier to sneak it behind enemy lines and find targets that you can kill solo. So another problem with PvP today, with solo PvP, is that so many fights are setups where you're being baited and people are trying to trick you and, and just blob you or in general just completely unfair fights where you go out and you roam for 30 minutes an hour and let's stay with the vagabond and you're in your vagabond and then you come up against a rapier falcon and like two cinnables or something ridiculous that's a complete counter to you and you have no you have no options of a way you can get a kill off that um, short of something pulling off a miracle and killing the rapier or the falcon by isolating the other two ships which would be incredibly difficult due to their speed so many people in the game let me say it this way EVE Online as a game has matured a hundredfold since I first started making PvP guides uh, people have used my PvP guides, learned from my, f my free part of my website, and in general, the entire level of competition in EVE Online is at least, at least five times harder than it was, say, four years ago. Uh, when I first started putting out these guides was in 2011, I think, so roughly four years ago. I may have done a video before that, I'm not sure. But with me and then several people after me making videos that taught people how to do stuff, it's much more difficult to get certain things to happen. For example, if you fly a Tyrannus, it's more difficult than it used to be to get someone to separate from their blob to come try to tackle you. People have are learning the tricks. So this is a new trick. That's why this is so valuable. This is a new trick. So most people, or not most people, many people don't realize the Pilgrim is able to newt to 25k. They missed that patch. They didn't pay any attention to it or they forgot. So the fact that the Pilgrim can now newt out to 25k, it used to just be 13k, and they changed that, I'd say six months, a year ago, something like that, and it's, it's an absolute mind blow to me that that no one's really taken advantage of this and really like shown what this ship can do with a 25k newt the pilgrim with a 25k newt basically obsoletes the curse the curse is a little bit more hit points a little bit more speed um, overall it's the stronger ship in combat but the fact that you can cloak a pilgrim pretty much overweighs every single one of the curse's benefits. So we know the cur that the, the Pilgrim is a great ship. The curse is a great ship too. The problem you're going to find with the curse is that people avoid you. So it's the same thing as it's always been. The curse has always been a phenomenal ship, 
but the problem with with it is it's expensive and people will avoid you until they can completely counter you and blob the crap out of you so I've always found the curse to be pretty unproductive as a solo ship the pilgrim however awesome so I'm gonna talk more about tactics and the way I get kills in the tactics video so let's get started on the fitting video we've got our 25k newts and you notice I do not waste any of my high slots on things like Nazis um, for a start but other things like smart bombs um, drone d uh, range and enhancers or guns even you can fit guns on a pilgrim um, I, I even know of someone who fits a blaster pilgrim it's a complete max gank pilgrim that goes in um, with maximum gank and just shreds targets really quickly and everything has its place but for solo you want something that can stand a little damage and can hopefully get out so my first idea for doing that and you'll see one or two or maybe more videos where I am using something very similar to this is to make the most of the ship and its bonuses so we can see right here the pilgrim has a bonus to tracking disruptor effectiveness drone hit points and damage energy vampire and energy neutralizer transfer amount and 20 percent to vampire and neutralizer range it also has the roll bonuses which are relatively unimportant so um, the cloak delay is only five seconds that's good so you can recloak relatively quickly I found that to be helpful but mostly the most important things are in the uh, the top bonuses so we've got a high powered nuding machine that can tracking disrupt in general that tells me that this needs to be something that goes after turret ships and ideally turret ships that have an active gun such as blasters rail guns lasers uh, pulse lasers beam lasers something like that um, it's not going to do it's not going to do much against missiles they don't take cap they can't be tracking disrupted they're probably your biggest enemy on all on both the fits I'll show you missiles are really your not your friend that's your enemy um, and projectile turrets you can tracking disrupt so those are still doable with this fit but not the one I'm going to show you next that I prefer um, with this one here you could uncloak on a tornado orbit at 500 disrupt his tracking and you know you're you're easy you've got him no problem it's a super easy kill he won't do any damage to you whatsoever you could uncloak on a hurricane and you could probably get in at 500 micro warp drive off and you could avoid most of his damage but if you didn't you could go out to 20k because you've got your long point and you could stay out at 20k keep your newts on him make sure he's cap dead can't do any kind of tanking except for an ASB which is gonna run out pretty quickly and keep optimal range scripts on him so that he can't hit you out at 20k or if he does he's so far into fall off that it's negligible and you can tank it the decision on whether or not to use a medium ancillary armor repair or a tech 2 is completely up to you because this ship is pretty much meant to be 1v1 this fits specifically it's meant to be 1v1 the other one is it's much more of a skirmish and can take on multiple targets at the same time as you'll see this one is stronger than the other fit I'm going to show you in the long run but it's meant to take on one target so this one can take on a heavier target um, for example you'll see I'm pretty sure there's a video where I use this shield fit down here to take on a battleship and I'm unable to do it because I don't have enough prolonged tank to stay in the fight or well, there's some ship like that that's in one of the videos and had I had this ship I would have been able to stay in the fight forever avoid much more of the damage and uh, get that bigger kill so this one is more of a big game hunter but what you're trading for that big game hunting ability is really slow align time almost 10 seconds and that's with implants uh, 1% but we'll get to that in a minute 10, 10 second align time and only 1500 meters per second so what you're gonna find yourself a situation that's going to be very common to you um, that you're going to experience a lot in this ship in both of the fits is you're going to jump into a gate and on the other side you're going to see a camp once you jump into a camp you have two choices to make well okay you have three choices you can either try to run away by um, 
aligning, cloaking, then micro-warp driving, and getting one micro-warp drive cycle off and hoping you get out of the bubble should there be a bubble, or just cloaking and trying to warp before something can charge and uncloak you. But again, the slow align time, which is 7.1 seconds with the micro-warp drive off, means that they've got seven seconds to uncloak you and lock you. Or you can, option two, my favorite option in that situation, is to approach the gate, hit your cloak, and then immediately after hitting your cloak, hit your micro-warp drive. That way you cloak very quickly. Hopefully they don't get a good idea of where you are. You're moving towards the gate with some reasonable speed because you don't have a uh, speed penalty for your cloak. So your, your ship will try to approach this top speed due to the armor plates and the nano pumps. It's not going to get there. It's going to get like seven, 800 meters a second before it starts slowing back down. You will get a good ways towards the gate. Uh, the only problem at that point is they'll probably decloak you before you get to the gate is will they be able to get a bump on you in several webs and if they do you're pretty much dead your final option is to fight it out which is a good option especially in the other ship um, whereas you'll see me I in the one fight that comes to the top of my mind was where I jumped into a bunch of frigates there was I think an interceptor a tech one frigate a uh, destroyer, um, an interdictor, and a Tech 1 cruiser. And I jumped in, and instead of running back to the gate or running away, I was about to run away, and I thought, you know what, this is doable. So I decided I'm going to burn away from them and kill them as they come in at me. Basically make it a running fight, which you've heard me talk about if you've had my other videos. It's, it's a core strategy to fighting um, outnumbered is to fight while on the run. So you, you basically take down their ships in the order of the most the quickest ship. So the first one to reach you is the first one to die. In this ship, it's much more difficult. Like I said, this is more of a one target ship. It can be multitasked to fight other stuff, but it's not as easy. Um, but my main problem with, with it was when I was stalking a group in the very early videos of this guy, the first videos I recorded, I was using this ship and I found that I got killed once or twice due to the fact that I was unable to make it back to the gate fast enough even with the cloak due to its really terrible uh, agility and speed. So that's why I moved on to the shield one. Now I suggest the shield fit. However there is a place for this fit and if you're going to be spending a long time behind enemy lines and you're going to be very very selective about your targets and you want to hunt for the biggest possible targets and you're willing to be patient this ship has a place but keep in mind this ship is more of a pilot um, intensive ship it's going to require more of your attention your situational awareness and your um, it's going to require a little bit more piloting skill I believe than the other fit the other fit requires what it lacks in running all the modules, keeping your AAR overloaded because you always want to overload it. What it lacks in those things, in, in the operation of your ship, it increases in the fact that you have to be more situationally aware in the shield nano fit because in the shield nano fit, you are really having to make sure that nothing gets a scram on you and that any interceptor or frigate that gets within say 40k of you is locked and any of them that get within 25k gets a newt and then spread your newts across them and then take them out based on threat level and based on the the distance to you so if you've got an interceptor at 20k and you've neutered him down that's the ship you want to kill first so you want to try to prioritize based on threat value and distance and distance is also often the same as threat. Many times you will have a ship come up and get a surprise scram on you before you are able to react. You'll see that happen to me. If that happens, then you need to be present of mind and have enough situational awareness to get two scrams on that target. And do not, I'm going to try to remember to include this video, but I have a video about staggering your newts. It's, I couldn't stress how important it is on both of these fits always stagger your newts because the newts newt at the beginning of the cycle 
they do it once per cycle it's not slowly across the cycle so if you have two newts started at the same exact time then all you have is one strong newt you don't have two newts but if you have your newts off and a frigate gets a scram on you all of a sudden and you start one and then start the other about halfway through the other cycle you have staggered your newts and now you'll be making him go cap dead twice for every cycle you go through so he'll be less likely to be able to turn his scram back on to keep you scrammed while his buddies get there what you'll often see me do instead of taking time to stagger is you'll see me going quickly and going one two all at the same time turning two on quickly then waiting a half cycle turning the third on and turning the second off that way I have three quick newts especially for cruisers because they have more capacitor that has to be neutralized these uh, newts do 270 is how much they kill of your enemy's capacitor so <coughs> three of them will take uh, 810 so 810 capacitor from your enemy which most of the time will cap dead a cruiser so you hit them with all three but then you stagger the last one and then you turn off the middle one and as a result you've got two newts on the target that are staggered and one free that can go to anything else that comes near you and threatens you so that's the basic idea for staggering I can't stress how important it is um, you want to stagger and whenever possible you want to leave especially when you're in a, a fight where you're fighting on mul multiple targets you want to always have a newt available and off when possible so that you can use that at a moment's notice to back up a potential tackler or frigate uh, newts are also very powerful if you go up against an ECM ship I believe there's a video of that where you can pretty much stagger them and keep that ECM ship so cap dead that he can't use his ECM against you so I'm sure you understand the rest of this fitting tracking disruptors can disrupt uh, both range and tracking speed depending on the situation cap boosters make sure you've always got capacitor because this thing doesn't have any natural regen really um, you overload your AAR all the time every time you use it try to just cycle it maybe even right click it and set it um, not to auto repeat so that it's just one cycle per burst uh, it's a relatively big burst if you're leaving it running non-stop that's 459 DPS you're tanking which is pretty good considering you should be disabling the majority of your opponent's DPS with neutralizers and tracking disruptors you shouldn't be taking much DPS in the first place um, before I go to the next fit that I really prefer we'll go over the drones I usually take hammerheads infiltrators and warrior twos this is both fits and I take ECM 300s I have come to the conclusion recently that I never use the ECM 300s I, I haven't used them yet I don't know if they have any purpose my original idea was what if there was something like a carries and it was sitting out at like 40k or 35k kiting me and keeping me pointed so I'm stuck on field and, and you know I think in that case the warrior twos are just as good as ECM 300s unless he's really on the ball um, so I think you can replace these EC 300s with something else acolytes or I don't know anything else you've only got 25 m3 for them so um, whatever you want to take whenever you have an AAR you want to take extra nanite repair paste um, and as many cap boosters as you can take because in general this ship tends to be a ship that you take on deep excursions when you go deep into null sec or deep into low sec and you live behind enemy lines where maybe it's not so easy to resupply so you need to have supplies to be able to survive out there uh, for some time especially when you go deep null like there's been many times when I've been back in Fade and um, Declan and these areas where you can't dock you can't resupply and the nearest place to repair or resupply is 10 14 jumps away so it's a pain in the butt to have to resupply and in that case you want to make sure you have enough supplies finally before we move on let's look at the implants the implants for this ship most likely you're not going to have penalties the implants are more important for the armor version of the pilgrim because
because they can have a bigger impact on the pilgrim. So I do recommend these implants or better should you run the pilgrim. And I do recommend the armor pilgrim. And I do recommend that you use the um, standard exile booster or better. It's good to carry some synth with you as well in case you just need a little bit. Um, it never hurts to have it. It's very small in your cargo hold. But let's go over the implants real quick. There's an RS-603. That's um, Repair System 603. I believe it's Repair, repair Speed. No, yeah, it's Repair Speed. So minus 3% duration on your repair cycle. So it repairs faster. E EM-701, which is 1% to ship's agility. MC-803, or 803, which is, I'm pretty sure that's whole hit points. Yeah, structure, 3%. Doesn't hurt to have 3% more structure. You know, if you're ever in need of that extra 3%, then <laughs> you're probably pretty screwed already, but you never know. The RP-603 gives you 3% repair amount, so you get 3% more armor per cycle. And the HG-1001 is an implant. I just kind of throw on every setup for implants because there's so few slot 10 implants for a solo pilot that make much difference. Therefore, I tend to just run this. It's like 1% armor. Yeah, A 1% armor implant costs about a million isk in most of the trade hubs. And you get 1% armor. So that's you know 3% structure, 1% armor. A little bit more hit points to give you some survivability but it's really marginal the most important thing is this extra three percent here and three percent here which adds up to six percent or maybe even it compounds to be more than that and then you've got that extra twenty percent to armor repair and you know how to get rid of any side effects you may have although I still recommend you train the skill that allows you to get rid of side effects and that's that you can run tech one nano pumps or I believe you can get one or two tech twos on there it's entirely up to you. With the Shield Pilgrim, let's close the other one. With the Shield Pilgrim, implants are much less important. And since we're talking about implants, let's cover that first. We have got a 603, um, AC 603, that's 3% to uh, ship's velocity. 703 to shield management, that's 3% uh, to shield hit points. Um, down here is SP 903, shield percent. Um, 3% shield recharge, helps with your passive defense. Um, Zor's na navigation hyperlink is 5% to ship speed. And then the HG-1001, no drugs really help enough to be um, worthwhile here. Quaif, you know, it's not worth the cost in this case. Uh, really, in the videos you're going to watch of me flying the Pilgrim, you're probably only going to see one, maybe two videos where I had these implants. Um, for the vast majority of the videos where I'm flying this ship, I have zero implants. Zero. Not so much because there was a point to having zero, but I got lazy and I didn't feel like going and buying more implants after being potted. So I just didn't worry about it. Over here, I also want to stress on the Shield Pilgrim that Tech 2 implants are super important. Uh, they make a huge difference, and especially because they're resist, uh, resist rigs, they're much more important, much cheaper in the Tech 2 version, and very, very important. Now, this isn't necessarily the ideal way to do the rigs on your Pilgrim. It all depends on what you're up against. Based on just a, I don't know what I'm going to be fighting, attitude I would go with this if for example you thought that you know you weren't going to be taking a whole lot of thermal damage which is kind of silly because hammerheads and hobgoblins and blasters and so on um, you could increase your effective hit points from 28,000 right there to 29,000 marginal increase but you're you're opening up a little hole here for thermal I don't recommend it I like to have the resist holes filled and uh, be pretty even across the board so I don't have any surprises you may get used to thinking oh well, I can tank this much damage and you know fire from two or three ships isn't enough for me to worry about and I have time to get out 
um, in that case, but then all of a sudden they hit something where you have a really low resist, say you didn't have the EM resist, and then you're like, holy crap, where did all my shields go? And you drop faster than you're expecting, and you're dead because you don't have time to newt what you got to newt and get out. Uh, I was talking before about why is the Pilgrim the current king of solo PvP? If you've followed my guides for a while, you've heard me say that the most important factor to solo PvP is the ability to disengage. I don't know if it's still the most important thing, but if it's not the most important thing, it's like the second. So, being able to disengage when things go bad is monumentally important because 90% of the time, things are going to go bad. Many of the times, you're going to be able to go ahead and kill your target and leave, but sometimes you just need to nuke the target and get out of there. Being able to nuke multiple targets off you, remove their points by making them go cap dead, while staying aligned and keeping up as much speed as you can, overloading, remember overload that micro warp drive whenever you're in trouble, especially if you're trying to match a frigate speed, you're able to get out of most situations if you can keep a cool head and execute well. That's going to be the biggest, most important thing in this ship is how well you execute. If you execute well, you're going to have a great ability to disengage and therefore you're not going to die as often. You're going to have more fights, but the fact that you're skirmishing, typically orbiting at about 20 kilometers, is going to allow you to escape when things go bad and to pick at an enemy, maybe harass them and see if you can taunt them and cause just enough trouble to force them to do something that allows you to have an opportunity to have a kill. Perhaps that's uh, going up and nuding and putting a little bit, bit of DPS on a heavy interdictor on a gate, knowing that that heavy interdictor, there's no way you can break him. But if you do that, there's a good chance that he's yelling on comms, I'm being attacked, I'm being attacked, come help me. And then some frigates are going to show up that you can just nuke. So, always good to try to create fights by just poking it. Just keep poking them. Now let's go over the fit. As I said, this is my favorite fit for the Pilgrim. And sorry if you hear my squeaking chair, it's, it's irritating me too. Um, this is my favorite fit for the Pilgrim. The reason for it is, is it's basically a shield nano gank Pilgrim. I mean, it's kind of in the same style as my old favorite uh, Hurricane. Lots of DPS, reasonable speed and agility, and a pretty good little shield buffer. So as a result, you've got a ship that's capable of staying on the field for long enough to make decisions, to kill a ship, to get out, to do what it needs to do, but also has enough DPS to drop those ships before their enemies can, before the enemy's fleet can respond. Now, I'll give you an example of that. In the very early days of using this setup, and the reason, one of the other reasons why, not just the, the speed and the agility, you can see how much better they are compared uh, to the last one. It's 5.5 instead of 7 seconds without micro warp drive, and 7.9 instead of 9.9 .9 with micro warp drive. I found that in most of the cases, because I was in the system that they lived in, I would attack, let's say, a MOA in a belt and I would be unable to kill the MOA before three or four other enemy ships showed up and I had to get out of there. Due to the fact that on the other ship, let's bring it back up, the DPS is lower. You can see here 292 and that's with hammerheads. This is 397 with hammerheads. So that's over a hundred DPS difference which is very very big when you're in the heat of a battle and you need to drop the target quickly before your opponent gets there and then get back out. So, like I've said with the with the Tyrannus, one of the most important things that makes the Tyrannus a good interceptor 
is its high DPS output. It doesn't have a ton of tank. It doesn't have the best speed of all the interceptors. What it does have is lots and lots of damage output. Therefore, in a one of one verse mini situation, you're able to separate a target, kill it, and get away before they can warp to you and try to kill you. So that's very, very important, especially because that's the type of PvP you're going to be doing here. You're going to be that this works best when you go to people's home systems, when you live right on top of them, go where they rat, go where they live, kill their miners, kill their ratters. When they set up a camp, kill the frigates off their camp. It's a great ship to do guerrilla warfare with. It is the guerrilla warfare ship. You can go behind enemy lines and you can make them absolutely hate you. The first enemy I used it on hated me so much that they made an in-game mailing list about how terrible Abaddon 21 was and they sent each other little messages saying Abaddon is you know this and that calling me names etc. There was like their whole alliance was subscribed to some little stupid mailing list so that they could try to feel better about themselves because I was in their system every single night killing them. They were losing I don't know a billion isk a week to me or something like that. I was doing a lot of damage. I was killing their miners, I was killing their haulers, I was killing their combat ships, I was killing their sinos. I was doing everything. A lot of people say, isn't killing a sino? I had someone ask me that in local just like two weeks ago. Isn't killing a sino beneath you? And that question is just ridiculous. No, I'm not killing a sino ship is not beneath me. Killing a sino ship one time out of ten or two times out of ten is going to result in that guy getting pissed off enough at you to undock something else and try to come kill you. Killing that Sino ship, even if he laughs it off, is going to make him have a little bit of a grudge against you and the next time he sees you he's more likely to overextend himself and make a mistake you can capitalize on. You know, it's In poker it's called going on tilt or he's in tilt or whatever they say. But basically, he starts making bad decisions because he gets too emotional. And EVE is a game of mental, just as much as it is a game of strategy and tactics and, and how well you fly your ship execution. But you've also got to play the mind game. You've also got to think, what is your opponent thinking? What can I do to change the way he's thinking? What can I do to encourage him to make mistakes? And basically, the, the way to find those answers is what would do it to you. So... You know, you ask yourself, what would I do in that case? If some, some, you know, dirt bag was in my system, killing all my Sino ships over and over and over, I would get irritated and I'd want to kill that guy. So, you know, it's more likely to get you a fight. And even if it doesn't get you a fight, it's going to hurt their morale and improve your chances of getting their alliance to mobilize to try to fight you in the future. So... Even if they hate you, and they will if you do this, if you stay in their system and hunt just one person and stay on top of one person, they are going to hate you. Ignore them. Say nothing in chat. Stay quiet. Don't let them know whether you're there or not. You're a phantom ghost, and whether you're there or whether you're not, they don't know. They go out to rat. They rat. Nothing happens to them. The next time, they die. It's completely unknown. The fact that they have no idea of knowing what's going to happen when they leave the station means that you can win, especially in the cases of wars. So you might have seen my art, recent, art, recent article series about guerrilla warfare. That's what the, it's all about is this ship. This ship was the inspiration that really got me thinking about it because this ship is it. If you had five of these back in your enemy's, ten of them back in your enemy's space and just pretty much logged on AFK most of the time but logging in every once in a while to kill stuff, and whenever there was a, a fleet or a blob to kill, you just all of a sudden um, came together with all ten at once. I mean, you would just be able to do so much damage. Um, you could take a small group of pilots and put them into almost any alliance's space in the game and completely disrupt their entire alliance with enough pilgrims. They are extraordinarily bad for alliances, um, for nullsec ratting alliances. They cause untold amounts of grief. Uh, I'm going to talk more about tactics later. I need to back off of that a little bit. So we're talking about fittings. The difference in the fitting here, we've got three damage amplifiers 
for our drones. Three of them. That's why we've got this great DPS. We've got a nano to improve our ability to warp away quickly, reapproach the gate, gate quickly, and do our nano stuff. Because you're flying it very similar to, say, an SFI, where you're constantly trying to stay at range and not get yourself in a situation where you're scrammed webbed. You want to stay at range, so that's, that's not an option. Drones are the same. You want to take enough repair paste. I actually typically take about 100 repair paste with me because I find that I overload quite a bit when I'm flying this ship. Um, I overload the warp disruptor sometimes, the micro warp drive sometimes, and rarely if there's a bigger target that I'm having trouble nuding out, I will overload the newts. So that's pretty much it for fittings. I want to show you one more thing before we go. Um, it is Navy cap boosters here because you need to carry as many as possible. <coughs> so here is Lynx. So you will see me in several of the videos. In many of the videos, you'll see me in a fleet with Hans. In the vast majority of the videos, I am not using Lynx. I'm not using any form of Lynx to improve the ship's ability to fly. I'm primarily using Hans in all the videos you see as a scout because being able to see what's on the other side of a gate when you jump into a dead end which in many times that's what happens when you're back in these pockets that groups will live in being able to see if there's a camp on the other side is pretty huge so I've got Hans in a Loki with interdiction nullification and covert ops cloak when I do use him uh, he gives me a pretty nice bonus to speed, point range, and shield resist. As well as, I believe right now, Hans has the shield um, mine, mine link. This is the speed one, so it's not going to be quite the same as I'm experiencing, but close enough. So, let's, let's see what happens to the speed, the point range and the hit points when I add Hans. See how big it is, as well as the agility here. So, pretty huge. This went from 7.9, the agility, to 6.7. That's a really big difference. Um, that's because this implant partially gives a bigger bonus to agility. Went from 1900 something meters a second to 2456. So now you're really cruising. You're going the speed of you know, vagabonds, staver fleets, uh, nano cruisers, um, doing pretty well on that side, and able to you know do a little bit with frigates. You're in, getting close to that frigate range, and with an overload, you can approach that frigate range of speed for a small amount of time to get a nude on or to get away, as you may see me do in some cases. The warp disruptor goes from 24 kilometers to 31.9, which is pretty awesome. And the hit points, I believe, were at 29,000, and now they're at 36. Uh, also, the defense goes up. I think that was 57, and now it's uh, 76. So, yeah. So, a big difference for Lynx. If you can use Lynx, use them. It used to be, you know, the true solo PvP or does it solo. And, you know what? That's pretty much bullshit. Um, I still do most of my stuff solo. But... For me to tell you that you should fly solo when you can get an advantage by using Lynx would be just ridiculous. Implants, drugs, Lynx, they all make a difference. Why would you purposefully not give yourself every advantage you can? You can fly this ship and be successful without Lynx. In the vast majority of my videos, I do not have Lynx. But you can be just a little bit more successful if you do have Lynx. And it's not that hard to get two accounts and train one up for links. Maybe two, three months of training, and you've got a Loki set up just for links or a Tengu or whatever you want to use. You can copy my fit here if you like. It's a fit I've used for a very long time. I also use this fit for Black Ops dropping, but I basically change out the subsystems and the um, all the modules. So. It quickly flips over for a Black Ops fit as well, so it's dual use, and that's all this guy does. He's Black Ops or Lynx or Scout. I can't stress how important it is 
even if you don't have links to have a scout because one thing the scout can tell you what's going on even if he's just in a unfit buzzard or manacore or whatever but also if you've got some fleet fleet skills um, say like a baden has almost level five in leadership across the board you see there's a pretty nice bonus and benefit just to having the leadership bonuses and that's not even counting the uh, the links or the implants that's just based on those leadership skills that improve your shields armor um, lock range lock speed and all that agility so <clears throat> those are very important um, and if you can get a if you can get just completely untrained alt in a rookie ship in the same system as you and use your mains leadership skills you can give yourself a small advantage right from the start and then as you build it up that advantage will continue to grow so that's the fitting video I suggest the shield pilgrim it's what you're gonna see me use the majority of the time it's fast it's kitey and it does a lot of DPS